Hello there all, welcome back to EOS Acro. This video is part of the Rubik's Cube series and in this one I'm going to finalize on the Rubik's Cube controls. So let's get started. Now to add in all this functionality quickly to the different groups, I'll just copy the transform node, paste it here, connect it to my right side. You can see all the expressions and things have all copied over. Only problem is, if I come back to my right side, you can see that the entire thing had, uh, the entire selection happened on the x-axis, meaning I moved the whole thing on x-axis, so my rotation should also be happening on the x-axis. Whereas now if I come and try to do some rotation, you can see the whole thing just gets messed up. So I want the same expression, but I don't want it on y-axis, I want it on x. So I'll select the whole expression, Control X that. I'll uh, come out of there. It just gives me an error. I'll Control Shift click so the expression is gone. I'll come to X axis and paste the same expression. This time I try to rotate. You can see that this is going clockwise properly. I enable the toggle and now if I go it goes anti clockwise. Perfect. I just need to replicate the same thing for front. I'll copy this, paste it here, connect it, and this time. I basically want it to go to the Z axis, so I'll go Control Shift, click on this X axis value, and on Z axis, I'll paste the same one. This time, rotate. You can see the front is rotating counterclockwise. I remove the tick mark, and now it goes clockwise. Now, to apply the same functionality to the bottom, left, and back, I'll just go ahead, copy the top's uh, transform node, put it right below bottom, connect those two. And now, if I see the result I have, you can see the bottom is rotating, but if I look at the whole thing from the bottom, and I have a bevel issue there, which I have to fix. Now, if I look at the whole thing from the bottom and try to rotate, you can see it's going counterclockwise now, and if I turn on the counterclockwise toggle, it's going clockwise. So, all of these three nodes, because they're on the opposite sides of the cube, need to be reversed. So, all I need to do is get rid of the negative mark I'd put right below before the rotation. So now if I do the same thing, it just goes perfectly. So now all I'm going to do is copy the transforms from the previous nodes, paste them here, I'll connect them straight across, I'll just remove the negative sign. And now immediately all of my um, transforms work perfectly and no matter which one I go to they work properly in the right direction. So now that I have most of my functionality the last thing I need to work on is selecting the layer itself which needs to get the rotation. Now to add in the functionality where I can select the layer I want to be rotating I'm going to make use of the switch node. So let me just full screen the graph view for now and here I'll just type in switch and what I wanted to do is uh, be able to switch between all of these different transforms. So I'll select all these transforms and plug them in. So now, what the switch allows me to do is switch between any particular one at any given time. I'll press L to lay out this first. Let's come out now. And when I'm looking at the switch node itself, I can come here, give any angle I want. And by default, it's selecting the first input. You can see that is the only line which is solid here. And uh, once I've given in some amount of rotation, if I come to the switch and change the input to, let's say, 1, it immediately switches to the right-hand side. And then again to the front. Then it goes to the bottom and so on. So it just keeps switching between the different nodes which are connected in order. So. To get this to actually work with a menu item, I'll go back to the edit parameter interface and what I need to do is just make sure I'm connecting the proper input value. So as you can see, the top is going first, the right is going next, front is going third and all of that one after another. I just need to make sure I know the proper order. I can just select the layer, go to the menu item. So the first option is always going to start with a zero and I want the label for the zeroth item to be top. So now the zeroth item is always going to be known as top. Same way I need to plug in the values for all the different names. So one is going to be right, two for front. So I've gone ahead and plugged in all the six values, zero to five, I'll hit accept. Now if I come back to my section here, you can see I have an option to select the different layers. I can select any one, 
but the functionality does not yet come because the computer does not yet know that this has to be related to the actual switch node. To get the connection done, I can come back to layers, right click on that, copy the parameter, come back to the switch node and here on the input, right click and tell paste relative reference. This time, whenever I select any particular section here, you can see the number changes. That particular node gets activated and immediately I have the result. So I can tell, select the top uh, layer, rotate it by so much or rotate it counterclockwise or any other details as such. So pretty much this helps you create one particular move on a Rubik's Cube. So now that we have all of our functionality working, let's go back and add all of this functionality onto the single turn subnet. So to add all this info, I'm not going to turn this into a digital asset, but just plug all of this in. The way I'm going to do that is uh, going into edit parameter interface. I'll just drag and drop all of these notes onto this particular interface. And also the question mark looks a bit odd, so I'll get rid of it. I'll hit ap apply and you can see all these options are available and the control node has all the channels connected now. So once this is done, I can also go ahead and get rid of these uh, labels. I can just make them invisible so it's not distracting anymore. Accept and now I have a single turn node which goes ahead, rotates the Rubik's Cube uh, any way I want, any layer I want, how much ever I want. So if I want to actually um, go ahead and do a custom move on the Rubik's Cube, I can just tell, okay, select the top layer, uh, rotate it by let's say 90 degrees. I can again copy paste the node because now if you jump into the single turn, you can see all the operations again are going to happen. So it's just redoing the whole thing. This time I can tell, go ahead and rotate the right side. And no, I don't want it to go counterclockwise, I want it to go clockwise. So you can just keep adding one move after another to solve the cube the way you want. But this is not very intuitive. So in the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to procedurally let the computer decide randomly which side it wants to rotate and let it go ahead and do the rotation for you. And we'll add in a couple of more functionality at the same time. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys are finding the video tutorial useful. In the next video tutorial, we'll be again deviating from the Rubik's Cube to understand how to do repetitive tasks in Houdini. So till then, if you have any doubts, critiques or suggestions, they're all welcome below in the comment section in the video and I'll definitely get back to you. So that's it for now. I hope you guys are having a great time. I'll see you in the next video.